Considered to be one of poet Avayar's greatest compositions, Vinayaka Agaval contains some of the deepest revelations of the yogic system. It poetically glorifies Lord Karnapati and the signs he reveals to the poet. So here are some hand-picked verses. Number 1. Sorpatam kadanda turiyamenyana arpudam nirainda karpaga kalire Meaning, having transcended the stage of the word, one reaches the profound wisdom of Turiya filled with enlightenment. So, Turiya is the state of absolute consciousness. It is the state which is beyond the other three. The state of being awake, sleep and deep sleep. Jagrata, Svapna and Nidra respectively. This statement is also revealed in the Karnapati Upanishad of the Atharva Veda in the verse in reference to Lord Karnapati, who is beyond the three states of body awareness. So the core motive of the Vedic culture is to drive one towards enlightenment, the state of realization or experiencing complete oneness with the cosmos. We refer to this state as mergence with Godhood, Sayujya. Poet Avayar quotes absolute reality as Lord Ganesha. In other words, the absolute reality is experientially realized in the state of Turiya, which is what yoga is defined by. Yoga means union and union with what the absolute reality. This is the very declaration of the Vedas as well, where Lord Ganapati is regarded as the very manifestation of the absolute reality, Brahman. It comes in the Upanishad of the Atharva Veda again in the verse Tvam Pratyaksham Brahmasi meaning in reference to Lord Ganapati you are the very manifestation of Brahma or the absolute reality and in another verse Tvam Sakshadatmasi Nityam again in reference to Lord Ganapati as you who is verily the eternal Atma next verse Unbadu vayil oru mandirathal aimbula kadavai adaipadum kaatti So meaning through the nine doors by showing the unique one demonstrating even the attainment of the door to the five elements So the nine orifices in the body include two ears two eyes two nostrils one mouth one urethra and one anus in the yogic system, these are referred to as the Navadvaras or the Nine Gates. Lord Krishna mentions these gates in the Bhagavad Gita. It comes in the chapter 5 verse 13. Sarva karmani manasa sanyasya ste sukham vashi navadvare pure dehi naiva kuruvan karayanne Meaning Having mentally renounced all actions, the self-controlled embodied soul resides happily in the city of nine gates, neither acting nor causing action. So the essence is, by shutting these nine gates, these nine openings, one can very well raise his spiritual consciousness. In simpler words, these nine openings are linked to our five senses, which are the gustatory, which is related to the sense of taste, Auditory, which is the sense of hearing, olfactory, sense of smell, tactile or somatosensory, related to the sense of touch, which includes pressure, temperature, pain, and visual, which is related to the sense of sight. So by controlling these senses and mastering them, a yogi establishes himself in the path to enlightenment. Poet Avayar beautifully links the nine orifices with the five senses, by requesting a mantra from the Lord. Next verse Aratarat Ankusha Nilayum Pera Niruti Pe Chure Yarute. Meaning, given six, the state of Ankusha halted the speech and stopped. The yogic system recognizes seven main energy centers, a junction where the Nadis meet. Nadis are like energy circuits in the body, not to be confused with nerves. And the junction at which the Nadis meet are known as chakras. 
So seven main chakras are identified and each of these seven chakras have their own quality. Mooladhara is located at the lowest point and Sahasrara at the highest. The Mooladhara is the root chakra. As per the Ganapati Upanishad of the Atharva Veda, Lord Ganesha presides this chakra in the verse Tvam Mooladhara Sthitosi Nityam in reference to Lord Ganapati who eternally abides in the Mooladhara chakra. Mooladhara chakra activation is the initiation of Kundalini awakening. A yogi has to transcend through these seven chakras to reach the top in the journey of enlightenment. Poet Avayar here requests the Lord to bestow her the knowledge on the six chakras and to finally hook her with the Ankusha to the seventh one, the crown chakra where enlightenment is experiential. In the state of complete union with the Lord, who is the manifest absolute reality, speech stops, teaching stops. We are in a state of absolute divine communion. Next verse Idai Pingalayin Yuluttari Vitta Katayir Surumunai Kapalamum Karti Meaning through the parts of the Ida and Pingala from the seed essence of the spiritual journey, it culminates and reveals itself at the tip of the skull in the Sahasrara Chakra. The Ida and Pingala are two Nadis energy circuits in the spine. They represent the dualities Shiva, Shakti, Yin, Yang, Masculine, Feminine and other parallels to it. On the other hand, Sushumna is attributeless. It is a state beyond everything through which anything can be manifested. Once someone activates the Sushumna Nadi, he expresses Vishnu Tattva, the state of all pervasiveness. He becomes everything and anything in a state of complete oneness. A boy amongst boys, a woman amongst women, and God as pure consciousness when alone. Next verse Amuda nilayum adityan yakkamum kumuda sakayan gunattayum kuri. So, meaning the nectar state of the lunar channel, the motion of the solar force, complemented by the lunar energy, speaks of their harmonizing virtue. So, this is a direct revelation of the Hatha Yoga. Ha means the sun and Tha means moon. The basis of Hatha Yoga is about utilizing the source of life directly from the sun and the moon. In the Vedic culture, Manu is the progenitor of human race. He is the son of Surya, the sun god. One of his sons, Ikshvaku, pioneered the Surya Vamsha. Ikshvaku's sister, Ila, married Buddha, who is the son of moon or Chandra. This initiated the Chandra Vamsha. Everyone is carrying the genetic makeup of Surya or Chandra. Hatha Yoga is about directly connecting to the source of life on this planet, the origin of the DNA chain. Life started on this planet only due to the sun, who provides solar energy for plants to utilize in photosynthesis. All beings on this planet owe their nourishment from this solar energy. Thus, if we trace back to the primitive genetic makeup from which all of us originated, it leads us back to Lord Surya. The last verse Anu virk anuvai, appalik appalai, kanu mutri nindra, karumbulle karti, meaning revealing the atoms within atoms and distance beyond distance within the sugarcane. Sugarcane here can refer to the spinal column. Importantly, poet Avvayar talks about how time and space are relative. In Vedas, we always refer to absolute reality as being beyond time and space. In reference to Lord Ganapati, though are beyond the three frames of time, which is the past, present and future, so says the Ganapati Upanishad of the Atharva Veda. So time and space are units that act only on our physical plane. The body ages but not the spirit or the Atma. In the spiritual realm, time and space are non-existent. Therefore, one who has awakened his spiritual awareness through the spinal cord is beyond time and space. 
be the space between atoms or the distance between galaxies. They are all relative. An enlightened being with no doubt, poet Avayar creates a masterpiece that gives us the essence of the entire Vedic and yogic culture.